thanks for coming out tonight. My name is Joe Felton. The uh, company that I'm envisioning is uh, DIY Pros, and essentially the idea comes from my experiences as a first time home buyer. So, what it entails is a home improvement option which will link uh, homeowners to contractors for in home consultation so that they can receive some how to project specific guidance. Uh, Basically, you know, this revolves around the DIY mentality to do it yourself and provides the, the homeowner the opportunity to avoid high labor costs, which consume uh, the majority of the dominant part of the project budget and can also, you know, will lead to them not doing the project because of simply the afford the labor part of it. Uh, also, the opportunity for sweat equity. And this is big. Homes aren't appreciating the way that they used to anymore. You know, the housing bubble is burst. You can just buy a home, sell it 10 years later, and expect to make money on it. So uh, by, by completing home improvement projects, you're essentially adding value to your home. And hopefully, you can make more money in this. Some of you may be asking, well, how is this different from Angie's List? Uh, Angie's List is you know, basically just a contractor rating system. Customers go in there, they evaluate how a contractor did for them. Like they're still paying the contractor to do, to do the work for them. In this case, you're, you're getting consultation from the contractor, but then you're doing the core, doing the stuff. So as we dive in a little bit deeper here, uh, it would include just a one-year upfront fee, and the cost would be negotiated during the closing process between the buyer and seller. So those of you that have been through this, I'm sure you know about home warranties. Almost everybody purchases a home warranty. These days, you know, it's a buyer's market. You can often get the seller to pay for that. So I look at the home improvement option as, you know, something to maybe add on to that. And I think people would be more willing to pay for it when you roll it into a mortgage, you know, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollar mortgage. People are going to not worry so much about what I'm going to charge. So my experience this last year, um, like I said, labor costs are killer. I looked at you know different projects around my house, replacing windows, finishing a basement, putting in a, a, another bathroom, and you know receipt bids from a number of different contractors. And you look at how they break it down. And, um, you're looking at at least 50% of the costs just paying to have a warm body to do the work there. So the keys to success with DIY pros, I've got to establish relationships with realtors, mortgage lenders, and contractors because they're basically the parties that are going to make this work. They've got to buy into this. And I would start by targeting Johnson County. It's where I live. It's my backyard. Uh, first time home buyers and offices like myself. I think maybe it would go for something like this, trade up buyers and then growing families. So here's a look at the Johnson County housing market over the last five years, number of home sales. You can see it's uh, steadily decreased, you know, thanks to the, the housing bubble. And you take a look at new construction, it's also slowed significantly. Um, just looking there from 04 to 09, you know, over 4,000 building permits issued for new home construction down there. 600 times. I think we've seen similar number to that today. So what that means is, um, you know, realtors they aren't selling a number of the amount of homes that they used to. And DIY pros is, I think it's an everybody wins situation. Realtors can use this to push homes that maybe have sat on the market for a while, uh, foreclosures, you know, just homes that need some work that maybe people are a little scared of because the kitchen, you know, hasn't been updated in 50 years or something like that. Uh, contractors win because I'm going to pay them a steady income. It's, it's not going to be much, but there's going to be the potential for future jobs there because uh, ultimately, you know, people are going to are going to start a project and they're going to realize, I don't want to take on this part of it. Maybe I'll just take on this part of it. But, um, so. You know, contractors, I think that's a, a good source for them. And they're not taking on any liability. You know, they're just providing the, the guidance, the how-to, uh, but they're not doing it themselves. And, you know, we'll have waivers signed by all the clients, you know, so that they can hold us responsible.
responsible for screwing um, The buyers, of course, when uh, you know this is something that I've identified with, I could have really used uh, that sort of hands-on, you know, teaching uh, guidance. Uh, but I, you know, I'm someone that I want to I want to do the work myself. I just I want the know-how, um, and that you know what I found out is that. When you don't really know what you're doing, you spend a lot of time, and uh, a lot of times you end up redoing things three, four times just to make it look right. So it sure would be nice to know what you're doing. Sellers, uh, kind of ties kind of back to the old realtors, but I think you know sellers that have homes that have sat on the market for a while, this home improvement option can help uh, you know move homes through because. Uh, Especially if the seller is paying, willing to pay for this, then uh, you know they just have that opportunity to move their home further. And then, last but not least, of course, you know I'm providing a service to need a need at least that I identify with, and hopefully turn from. So my role, basically, to start off with, would be establishing the relationships because again, that's key. Uh, you know, we are successful, we land a few clients, I'm going to start fielding calls, scheduling the site visits, the contractors, and follow up with the clients. Uh, you know, I, I think this is it's going to be a trial and error. i got to see what works and what doesn't. And, uh, of course, make sure all the legal documentation is in place before it works. And, and the contractor has it pretty easy. I mean, I'm, I'm doing the work here, you know, as far as getting clients, and they just got to show up provide their guidance and walk away. So this uh, this fee structure is just it's it's a starting point. It's not definitive by any means and definitely would have to play around with the numbers a bit. But I'm thinking a, a one time <coughs> annual fee of seven hundred and fifty dollars. Sounds like a lot when you look at what people pay for a home warranty, which I thought was pretty much useless. Um, this number is pretty similar to that. So, uh, in addition, I would take income from the contractors, any sales that they make to these to my clients. Uh, I would like a ten percent cut on that because I did the work up front again. And uh, I would pay the contractor fifty dollars a site visit. Now that's not much money, but contractors today, you know, they spend a lot of overhead time going out to people's homes and trying to sell themselves um, with no guarantee that they're going to get any work out of it. A lot of times walk away with nothing. So this is a, a way to fill in some of that overhead. And I think there's some, some growth opportunities. You know, you started in Johnson County, we could expand there, we could, you know, outside of Johnson County. I mean, we could expand to potentially offer this to all homeowners, not just those, you know, new home buyers. So we could possibly create some membership levels, uh, maybe break it down so people could pay monthly uh, rather than a big chunk up front. You know, maybe they've just got a, a small project that's going to take them a couple months and a couple uh, sessions with the contractor. Uh, and then we could expand, you know, maybe look at doing some Kind of hands-on class classes for people uh, to learn, and you know that's already being done by Home Depot and other places. But um, I think we can compete uh, with the level of service that they provide there. Uh, we also look at partnering with you know the home improvement and hardware stores because uh, you know the DIYers that's where they're going to get all the materials. So uh, I think you know that's pushing a lot of people, especially in the local hardware. Some, probably some benefits there with advertising and things like that. Nine out of ten businesses fail, so you got to have a backup plan. My wife's a practicing attorney, specializes in bankruptcy, her firm specializes in business organization. So uh, hopefully, you know, if I dug myself in a hole, they'd be willing to, to cut me a break and help me get back up on the team. So. Any questions? Does she know she's the backup player? <laughs> <laughs>
I didn't tell her I was going to show a picture. Uh, Joey, what strikes me on that is this idea that you have these contractors who, who wind up to take a visit of fifty dollars, and and you have two other banks working in conflict. One is the contractors that are looking at potential work, and you have set it up so that you're actually getting ten percent of what he might sell as contractor work. And it seems to me as a consumer. You want to be Actually, you want to go to DIY Pros to guard against that because you want to go to yourself. You want the participation, but not to sell from the contract. Right. Yeah. You're you're absolutely right. I mean, I would hope to partner with uh, you know contractors that are honest that aren't going to you know, push sales, but they will they'll take the opportunity if it arises. And I know that's kind of a fine line. Um, I just I wanted to benefit you know if they you did get some. Ultimately, you know, I think it should be financially rewarded. But I guess I'll just have one more uh, guarantee or warranty for the service that we're providing. Because what what to go bad? You mean as far as you know, the you customer would, just yeah. really messes things up? Yes. Yeah. Are, are you protected? I there, would, or are you offering something? I would make sure to have legal paperwork in place so that I'm protected because I. I mean, you just, you can't, I don't know, offer that much to people because, you know, they are ultimately doing it themselves. The contractor's not going to you know, go in there and hang around all the time and things like that. So they've got to accept that responsibility. I don't try to guard against that. Two, but for the one is, uh, there's actually a loan program out there for two or three K, which is specifically for rehabbing new home purchases. So you might not have to worry about working with the realtor directly because they might actually have money already available through that program. And to, um, I think there is a value proposition for the contractors because there's some, um, if you're like Saturday morning talk radio, there's some really great like home improvement kind of shows. Um, the guys who do those shows always offer their phone numbers to call anytime for consultations, stuff like that. They'll say they'll just help, you know, answer any questions you have. There's got to be some like value in that or they wouldn't be doing it. I'm sure there's right. lots of business out of just answering questions. So I think there's... Hey Joe, I don't know, to Bucky's point, I don't know why you don't push that as it's your choice. Look, we'll either give you a consultation and say this is what I can do it for. If you did it yourself, cut my labor out, you have to buy all these things and it's going to take you about 12 hours. Push up your commission so you take maybe like 20% of that and then you charge more for the site visit because you're, it's a more, it's less risk for the contractor. He's not just going there to tell them how he's not going to be used. You tell yeah. them, look, you have, you have, you can be, you can be salesman like, these are people who are looking to do it themselves, but maybe they don't like working with you, but it could go either way and maybe not have it be, and to Bucky's point, not have it be, well, we're DIY pros, it's like, well, do it yourself or have help. And, and then I think you can ask for more as a commission. You can ask, you can pay more on the site visit. That makes it more attractive to the contractors and then financially more attractive to you. Did you consider having a contractor as an employee who simply does site visits because he's good at teaching and evaluating? I didn't. I viewed this as uh, especially starting up something where you know I have a full time job, I wouldn't be quitting that to take this on. I don't want to manage uh, an employee, uh, so that's something I would try to avoid. I do see the value of having your own thing house person. Um, yeah, if that's all he did, then you have that conflict of interest. Right. That's, that's true. true. That's true. He's a consultant. That's yeah. Good. That's good. Did you consider getting at the intersection when the transaction is happening? Uh, you're down to 600, and I would bet that number is actually less than that now in transactions. So you want to be, it would seem to me, I wonder if you consider being at that intersection. As we're sitting here, we're closing. Going to buy the homeowner's warranty, you buy DIY pros, you buy homeowner warranty slash DIY pros, you could opt out of the warranty, pick the DIY pros. I, did, did you consider being at that point when or, or being at point of sale or being you know part of the super warranty? Did you consider any of those? I did consider the uh, maybe trying to jump on the home warranty option. Um, you know, there's a lot of companies out there that. Offer home warranties. 
ultimately, though, I just I wanted to go it alone and uh, not have to take on any partnerships like that. Uh, but it's definitely something I consider because they've already they're already established, they're already well <coughs> people. Um, whereas you know, the Iowa pros, you know, at least initially, it's for them. Um, 